Ms. Mary Firio. She is a research fellow for the Gender in PNG program at the National Research Institute. She has a master's degree in political science and a graduate certificate in gender studies from Ohio University, USA. Before joining PNG NRI in May 2017, Mary worked with the Constitutional and Law Reform Commission, the CLRC, under the Research and Publication Division for eight years. She has experience working on various gender roles and law, CEDAW, violence against women, sorcery, women's health, and women leadership. Her interest is in understanding gender issues in PNG, particularly women leadership, and finding ways to improve women's participation, not only in the political sphere, but also in other spheres. Everyone, my name is Mary, and I work with the National Research Institute, and I'm currently on study break, hence I am doing a recording, basically to share my thoughts on temporary special measures, the global and national experiences, and what are some lessons that we can draw from this. So asking the big question of what is temporary special measures. These are temporary rules that are put in place to create opportunities for women in formal decision-making processes. And this can include government processes such as national level or the, the local level government as well and in trying to get women into election. So our concern is women in leadership space has been really difficult for women. And we know a lot has contributed to women not getting into parliament so far. And so we're looking at a practical um, mechanism such as TSM to see how it can best address underrepresentation of women. So this uh, TSM or quota system are basically rules um, that are put in place such as quotas, receive seats or targets. Now, for instance, Targets are like we look at a time frame of something that we aim to achieve, but also receive seats are like through the constitution or through an act of parliament. So TSMs are quotas and they're implemented basically to compensate for structural barriers that prevent women from getting elected, such as laws, systems, or traditional norms that discriminate against women. We know that Papua New Guinea is a very patriarchal society, majority, very few matrilineal, but defining it as a patriarchal society, many people still define the political space as emplaced or mantasol. I will vote for men. Both men and women are saying this. Now, we carried out our study in 2017 um, national election, and this is what we found out, that many voters still define political space as a men's space. Um, and so the term temporary special measures is actually drawn out from the um, Article 4 of the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, or we know that it's CEDO, and basically emphasizes on trying to create equal opportunities for women in spaces where women are being discriminated or have less women in, in parliament or women's representation. So this is not, TSM is not just drawn out from the blue, but it's actually according to what is defined in terms of the UN and what has been found out in terms of the studies that have been conducted. And a critical element to look at the use of TSM is the word temporary, which means that it can be implemented as and when equality is achieved and then it can be removed. Um, and so you have something like the Sunglitch Clause that is included in the Constitution where it serves for a time frame of period, and then when there's confidence of the people voting women or the women performing, then it can be removed. So globally, TSM are implemented in countries that have a trend of underrepresentation of women, and there are three types of um, quota system that is practiced worldwide. One is through receive seats, through the constitutional amendment or constitution, and then also quota candidates quota, which is through an act of parliament and political party quota, which creates a certain percentage of women in the political party. So we have seen that there's evidences of um, improvement of women's representation in parliament because they have implemented TSM globally and in, in different countries. Um, for example, if we can today we have seen over 50% of countries in the world that have applied one form of quota system and this has improved women's representation in parliament. Um, you can look up international um, interparliamentary union uh, website and then you can see all the countries that have um, women in parliament that is above 30%, some are above 50%, and that shows, and those countries have also mechanisms of quota system or temporary special measures. So some countries with similar developments to PNG have adopted um, 
quota system or temporary special measures to address this trend of underrepresentation of women. For example, currently you have Rwanda, the topmost country that has a lot of women in parliament. This and a contributing factor is because they have a quota system that they have introduced in 2003 that ensures that 24% of the 80 seats are filled by women um, in the Chamber of Deputies. So currently they have over 60% of women out of the 80 in Parliament. When we look across Papua New Guinea to Timor Leste, they have legislated gender quotas, um, which was introduced in 2006 that ensured that 20, that ensures that um, one women in two one women in three in a political party are endorsed and so it's called a zip system and it currently has about 40 percent of women in the national parliament in timor leste looking across in the pacific region not far from Papua new guinea samoa has the safety net model where the constitution requires that the parliament must have 10 percent of women they have 50 members in parliament so five must be women if one has won through the open system then four must be um must be appointed through the elected most women elected method so basically you have countries that we know of and i think i think this is also contributing to the um, Samoa having first women in parliament, though it's controversial, but it has contributed to women contesting outside in the open space and then contesting also for other seats as well. So what have been some of the experiences of Papua New Guinea on TSM? Basically, there were three attempts previously. In 2009, for three reserve seats in parliament. In 2012, for 22 reserve seats. In 2017, for political parties to have 20% of women. Well, unfortunately, all of them have failed. And one of the main reasons is because there is no political will and there is no support on the floor of parliament. A lot of people are not aware. A lot of people don't know what it constitutes of and they misinterpret as being appointment. Well, some of the systems can be elected and some can be an appointment. And so... This has taught us some of the lessons in terms of um, what do we learn from this. So not far from here, we know that Bougainville um, has also implemented um, temporary special measures or quota system, where the constitution of 2004 allows for three reserve seats for women in parliament. An interesting fact from the Bougainville is that the women have contested through the TSM which has been voted by both men and women, and they have won, and they have run in the open seats, and they did win as well. Francisca Samoso is a is, is, is an evidence of this, where she, she went up to being a Speaker of Parliament. So we could see that it's not far from from our soil or from the mainland of PNG that we can learn from. And even even in, in Motukweta, where the Assembly has also implemented a quota system that allows Receive two receive seats for women, one in the east and west Motukoita, and these are voted by women. So basically, it allows for the election of women where there is mandate and there is not things like tokenism, which is very controversial in some 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 arguments. So what have we learned from these experiences of um, quota system? That um, given that the argument, why is it important to implement this in PNG? We know that given the history of political um, political history in Papua New Guinea since 1975, there has been very low representation of women in parliament. Unfortunately, only seven women out of a thousand over men has been represented in parliament. Now, there is an imbalance. And, and out of this, only three women has been in parliament at the highest and zero at the lowest compared to 90, um, 109 and 111. And, and so there is no representation of women in parliament. Um, there is also the unequal playing field of politics where you have um, not just a thought about patriarchal implications or embedded patriarchy system in, in the culture that we have in the society, but also given that there are stereotype sentiments where people regard all women are the same. Um, what the women has performed before and failed, probably this woman will also perform and fail. And so stereotype sentiment is something that is really, really strong in what our, our team has found out. And when we went out for a study in 2017, there's a lot of people that saying that women are all the same. What has the previous women achieved? And so they have not achieved. So the, the next women might also be the same. So stereotype sentiment is something that is, that is really strong in our society that we need to break. Um, we also have the election irregularities that a lot of election um, 
election factors have contributed to women um, basically because they're few and then so it also contributes to them not winning the election and these are like workers standing up late um, setting up the polling booths late um, no name on the common roll um, 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 given the electoral boundaries are not being set up properly people um, did not know where to vote for um, and also given that also Papua Guinea is a traditional society most of the voters are being influenced by um, houseman um, you will vote for me because my papa blood is blah house now me talk like my vote for me so women are also being influenced and in the security reason as well when we look at national level there is um limit limitation on limited legislation to empower or to promote women in leadership and i think the only one is the organic law on provincial and local level government that allows women to sit at the local level um, which is at the ward as well as the provincial level but it does not allow it does not promote women in in parliament but also there is loopholes still in the local level government of because of the appointment processes um, and so it's not consistent across Papua New Guinea that have women. So when we look at that, we we still have lack of women representation at all levels of government. Um, last year we had three, last parliament we had three women. This parliament we had no women at all. Looking back on local level government, we had in 2003-13, we had 10% of women um, occupying seats at the local level. But then we had 1.4% or less than 2% of women in, in the 2017 or 2013 2017 election now we are not progressing but we are regressing and that means that it is really worrying trend for the next election that is coming up given that also added to the attempts of previous attempts to introduce TSM has failed it is more worrying that we might see no women or very few women get back into parliament and we have not improved um, the representation of women in parliament where women do not have voice now the argument is that we want women to compliment men and we don't want to com to com women to compete with men. And so women are there to compliment men to address issues such as gender-based violence, um, women's health issues. Um, they bring something different. And so the decisions are made more informed and more meaningful. So that services also that women are also know that they are being heard, their voices are being being heard in the, in the parliament or at the other levels of government. So temporary special measures is a mechanism that is going to be that will help this process of improving representation of women in parliament that has its benefit that has its negatives but it, it shows that it, it it is evident across the world that it has improved um, women's voices in the parliament so that women when they get in there through this mechanism they can show that they're capable they can change the mentality that people have for them that they can make they be able to make decisions that are informed and contribute meaningfully and so when the time lapses for the tsm then people will have more confidence in them voters will vote for them so i hope that the government's um push for five five reserve seats is something rather than nothing and it's a start to changing our perspective on women in leadership that we may improve it so let's all work together and support this thank you